Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to part two of section 2.2. Before I jump into this lesson, let's review what we did in part one. So I want to determine the measure of theta to the nearest degree if cosine is equal to negative 0 0.3218 and tan of theta is greater than zero. So first thing is, I have an approximate value, which tells me I'm not dealing with a special triangle or the hand trick. I have to go to my calculator to find the reference angle. So let's ignore the negative here and just find the reference angle using that cosine of theta is 0 0.3218. So I, ignoring the sign, I can find the reference angle. And the reference angle, we'll call it 71 degrees. So now I can go to my negative sign. So I'm going to look at my cast rule to see where is cosine negative. So looking at my cast rule, I know that cosine is negative in quadrant number two and in quadrant number three. However, I'm given one other piece of information and that is that tan is positive. So tan is not positive in quadrant two, it's positive in quadrant three. So in this case here, we're only looking for one specific angle. So let's look at a reference angle of 71 degrees in quadrant number three. So it would look like this. In quadrant number three, a reference angle of 71 degrees. I know to figure out in quadrant number three, I just do 180 plus my reference angle. So I will do 180 plus 71 degrees. So that is going to be 251 degrees. So I can put that all together in my calculator and see if it is in fact correct. So cosine of 251 degrees, it's not exactly negative 0 0.3218. It's a little bit off and that's because we rounded, but it's close enough to tell me I know I did that correctly. So let's look at how do we find trig ratios given a point on the terminal arm. So I'm going to tell you a point that the angle passes through and we're going to find the exact values of the trig ratios and also the value of the angle. So what we're going to do is plot the point, connect the point to the origin, that distance will be the hypotenuse, drop a perpendicular line from the end of the angle down to the x-axis, positive or negative, labeling the sides in that quadrant. And then we can find the exact values and also the value of the angle. So here's an example. We have this point 3, 4 that lies on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. So it looks like this. There's 3 and 4. I drop a perpendicular line down to the x-axis. So I know that my x and my y values are 3 and 4. I can use Pythagorean theorem or I can use a Pythagorean triplet, 3, 4, 5, to know that my hypotenuse is 5. So once I've done that, I can label all my sides. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Because I'm dealing with the quadrant number one, I can use any of those inverses, sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse, to find out what my angle is. So you can see whether I do sine, cosine, or tangent, my angle is approximately 53 degrees. Let's try another one. So in this one here, my angle passes through negative 5 and 12, and I want to determine the exact values of each one of those. So passing through negative 5 and 12, drop down a 90 degree angle, and label my x and y sides. So I have negative 5 and 12. Again, this is also a Pythagorean triplet. You can use that, or you can use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. Either way, you're going to get 13 is the hypotenuse. 
So let's do sine, cosine, and tangent again. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and I'll put the negative up top. So to find my angle, I can use sine, cosine, or tangent, but I'm going to ignore the signs of them. So I'm just going to use the numbers in quadrant number two. So ignoring the signs, I want to find my reference angle. So my reference angle, regardless of what trig ratio I have, you can see my reference angle is 67 degrees. Now that's not what my angle is, that's my reference angle. So my reference angle is 67, but in quadrant number two, my angle will be 180 minus the 67. So that's going to be 113 degrees. Let's try another example. So this time here, I'm not giving you a point, I'm giving you a piece of information. So suppose theta is an angle in standard position in quadrant three, and tangent of that angle is 1 over 5. I want to find the exact values of the other measurements. So looking at tangent being 1 over 5. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 1 over 5. Now because it's in quadrant number 3, I know that both x and y are negative. So to find my hypotenuse, I can just do a squared plus b squared. So 1 squared, sorry, negative 1 squared plus negative 5 squared, that's just 26. And the square root of 26 would be my hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is root 26. So let's list sine, cosine, and the angle. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So negative 1 over the root of 26 which I can rationalize to be negative root 26 over 26. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Negative 5 over root 26. And I can rationalize that, and it's negative 5 root 26 over 26. So to find my angle, I first need to find my reference angle. So I can use sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse, as long as I don't use the sines. So sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse, ignoring the negatives, I can see that my reference angle, we'll call it 11 degrees. So in quadrant number three, my angle is going to be 180 plus the reference angle. So it will be 180 degrees plus 11 degrees, or 191 degrees. Let's talk about some special angles called quadrantal angles. A quadrantal angle is an angle with a terminal arm on the x or y axis. So it can be an angle here, 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 or here. So I want to look at these quadrantal angles, use what we've done to find sine, cosine, and tangent to be able to find the exact trig ratios of those angles. So for example, the quadrantal angle 90 degrees. So we looked at in general, if I have any point x, y where r is the hypotenuse, if I were to drop down a 90 degree angle like this in my triangle, I know this would be x, this would be y, and that would be r. So we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or y over r. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, or x over r. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So what I'm going to use is the rules in general for x, y, and I'm going to use those to help me find quadrantal angles. So imagine if I were to take this arm, this terminal arm of the angle, and slide it so that it was right here at 90 degrees, because this is 90 degrees right here. So if I were to slide that over to be 90 degrees, it would meet on the y-axis. Because it's on the y-axis, it's a y-intercept, meaning that x is 0 and y is just y. Because I'm sliding it along, the radius will also have a length of y. 
So I'm going to use all these properties and substitute them in here to see how that's going to work. So my angle is now going to be 90 degrees. My x value will be 0 because it's a y-intercept. y will just be the length of y. And the radius will also be the length of y. So with these new parameters in place, let's figure out what sine, cosine, and tangent are. So sine of the angle is y over r. So y over r, using our new values, y over r. That's y over y, or just 1. Cosine is going to be x over r. Well, x is now 0 over r is y. 0 over y is just 0. And tangent is y over x. So that will be y over x, y over 0. Mm, I cannot divine, divide by 0, so that would mean that tan of 90 degrees is undefined. So let's put this into our calculator and see if we're right. Is sine of 90 actually 1? Is cos of 90 0? And is tan of 90 undefined? So putting that into my calculator, I can check. So sine of 90, 1, yes. Cos of 90, 0. And tan of 90 is an error, which means undefined. So yes, we could simply put those into our calculator, but now you understand the mathematical reason why that is. Let's try one more quadrantal angle. Let's try 180 degrees. So imagine I were to take this point here, x, y, which is any point, and slide it all the way over here to be at 180 degrees. So that's an x-intercept, but not just any x-intercept. It's along the x-axis that is negative. So that means that x becomes negative x, y becomes 0, and r, the radius or hypotenuse, becomes the length of x. Now remember, the hypotenuse is always positive, so it can't be negative x, it has to be positive x. So by sliding it over there, my angle becomes 180, so notice all of my angles here become 180, and I'm going to use the ratio of all of my trig ratios. So I know that sine of theta is y over r, which means that sine of 180 is going to be my new y over my new r. 0 over x is just 0. 180, cosine of 180, x over r. My new x over my new r, negative x over x, negative 1. And tan of 180 is y over x y, my new y, over my new x, and that's just 0. So if I've done this correctly, I know that 180, sine of 180 is 0, cos of 180 is negative 1, and tan of 180 is 0. Again, I can put these into my calculator to check to see if I did that correctly, and it looks like all of them line up so I know I'm good to go. So hopefully this makes sense here on how to figure out the trig ratios of all the quadrantal angles. In the practice questions, I'm asking you to find the other two angles that we didn't already do. So this is the end of this lesson here. I hope that it helped. I have some practice questions and some textbook questions for you to do. And then in the next video that we're going to do, we will cover sine law. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.